Hey everybody! What I have here may just be the toughest cut of beef that I can think of. It's the eye of round and today I'm gonna cure this, I'm gonna smoke this, and I'm gonna see if I can make this into something that I can actually bite through. Now let's get started. Even though it is roughly the shape of a tenderloin, that is the only thing it has in common with tenderloin. There's nothing even remotely tender about this guy. I'd say these things are as tough as boot leather, but that'd be an insult to boots. It's a very dense, very lean, and very, very tough piece of meat, and for that reason, it's usually an inexpensive cut of meat. Well, nothing's really inexpensive these days, but it's a heck of a lot less than a tenderloin. So I'm gonna wet cure and smoke this one to see if I can make something tasty that I can slice very thinly and throw on some crusty bread with a dab of some good mustard and make it tender enough to actually bite through. This type of curing is called equilibrium curing or equilibrium brining. And that simply means that we're going to brine this in a salt and cure solution with the goal of getting the brine to penetrate all the way through the meat and equalize the levels of salt and cure through everything in the container. So meat and brine, everything is balanced and that is going to take some time with a hunk of meat this size. So let's mix up a brine and get this guy soaking. To do this safely, you really need to go by weight and you wanna get the total weight of the water and the meat combined. So I've pre-weighed this roast and it's coming in at five pounds, which is 2,250 grams. And the metric system really is more accurate here, but I'll give the American measurements as best I can, even though those are gonna be a bit rougher. Now I'm gonna need enough water to completely cover the meat. And in this container, a gallon should be just about right. And that comes in at 3,800 grams. So the total weight of the water and the meat combined is six kilos, which is 13.4 pounds. Now I'm gonna dial this in to two and a half percent salinity. And you can go a little higher or lower than that, depending on how you like it, but two and a half percent works pretty good for me. So by multiplying six kilograms or 6,000 grams by two and a half percent, I get 150 grams of plain salt. And that was roughly eight tablespoons of salt. Now the cure goes in, and this is pink curing salt number one, and this contains a sodium nitrite that's going to kill any harmful bacteria that wants to grow in that meat. So I use the cure to keep that bad bacteria out of my meat and out of my mouth. The cure goes in at the rate of 2.5 grams per kilogram, or 1.1 grams per pound. And a common cheat is to add one teaspoon per five pounds of meat and brine, but that's not going to be as precise as weighing your cure. So for my six kilograms, that is going to be 15 grams of cure. And that goes right down in there. The salt in the cure is all that's mandatory here. And from this point, you can add sugar. I think I'll put in a cup of sugar, which is 200 grams or so. And you can add in whatever spices you like as well. Now, most of the flavors that come from the spices aren't water soluble, so they're not gonna flavor the meat all the way through, but they'll add a bit of flavor to the surface of the meat, which is good too. When I first started doing this stuff, I always wanted to push the spiciness as high as I could get it. But no matter how much cayenne pepper or habaneros I put into the brine, at some point it would just plateau and it would never get over that hump to ultra, ultra spicy. You'll get much more flavor and spiciness by coating it with herbs and spices after you brine it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that too when it comes out of here. But I am gonna add some seasonings to this because I kind of like 
the flavor of clove with beef, I'm gonna throw in just about a teaspoon. Normally I wouldn't even measure this stuff, I just toss it in. And I like to put some spice into everything, so I'll throw in a couple of teaspoons of cayenne pepper as well. Now I just need to stir this until all of that salt and cure and sugar is completely dissolved. It's not only the weight of the meat that determines how long this has to soak, but also the shape. The shape of the meat, either kind of cylindrical like this one, or flat like a brisket or pork belly matters because of the way the brine penetrates. And you can figure out all this stuff on your own, but these days online resources are plentiful, and I'll drop a link in the description to a handy calculator that's gonna do all the work for you other than mixing this up and cooking this. So now let's get this down into here. Now I've got plenty of brine here, but I'm gonna need to find some kind of weight to place on top of here to keep this completely submerged. A plate or a Ziploc bag with some water in it will work just fine for that. That'll get the job done. Now this goes into the refrigerator while that brine soaks in, and for a piece of meat this size and shape, it's gonna take at least a week. But I'm gonna push that out to 10 days to give it a little bit of extra time and hopefully tenderize it just a little bit more. Much, much, much later. All right, here we are after 10 days in the brine. And I did rotate that around a few times to make sure that all the spots that were touching the sides of the container got a good exposure. Now, we're gonna take it out. And I'm gonna pat off all the excess moisture. Now I'll tie this thing up and then we'll throw some spices on here. And this one I'm gonna coat with some coriander coarse ground black pepper, and some red pepper flakes. Hmm. put this on a rack so air can get all around it and this will go out into the refrigerator for another day to air dry before I smoke it okay surface is nice and dry I will pop this into a low smoker I'm doing 150 degrees Fahrenheit with some hickory smoke today and I think I'll let this go for about five hours down at that low temperature and in the meantime, I'll think about how I want to finish this one off. After five hours, I probably got some pretty good smoke penetration going on here. And there are now a few ways I could finish this off. I could turn the smoker up to around 275 and cook that off for a few hours. Or I could pop it in the oven and do the same thing. But I am just playing around with this today. So I am going to bag this up. And I'm going to finish this in the water bath. Now there's a good chance that a lot of this crust is going to sweat off of here when I do this. But this is how we learn. I want this to be kind of a medium rare when it's done. So I'll set the circulator to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and I can either pull this out of here in 12 hours when I get up to go to work, or I can pull it out of here in 24 hours when I get home from work. And I think that's what I'm gonna do because I do know that this piece of meat can be just about as tough as an old fence post. The next day. go 24 hours of gentle poaching that's definitely a little bit of liquid down in the bag now I'm gonna plop this into a tub of cold water to chill it out and then I'll put it in the refrigerator and we'll try this one out tomorrow which I believe will be day 14 so I popped open that bag and I drained off the liquid and then I've resealed this and after it's cured and sealed up like this, it would be good for a very, very long time out there, at least a couple of months and pretty much indefinitely in the freezer. Now let's get into here and see what it looks like. Well, I didn't lose all the crust. Still looks pretty good. Let's just pop a couple of these strings off of here. Get a look at that. That is a nice, beautiful color. All the way through, it's the same color, and that will let you know that your cure got all the way in there. If the cure hadn't penetrated all the way, you'll see a grayish spot in the center where it didn't quite get in there. But this looks absolutely beautiful. Check out that bite. Mmm. Well. Mmm. That is very good. And it is completely tender. Oh yeah. I know exactly what to do with this. is where it's at. Oh man, that is awesome. <laughs> it's beautifully smoky, super tender. The crust is mostly still there, so you still get a great peppery and spicy bite. Just nailed it. <laughs> This is absolutely as good as any deli pastrami you're gonna find out there and better than a lot of them because you'll find that a lot of those have been pumped up with a whole bunch of water. And I don't know about you, but I don't like paying upwards of 15 or $20 a pound for water. All things included, this one ran me under $4 a pound. And at that price, I can do up a bunch of these pop them in the freezer, and never look back at that deli counter again. So I am so glad I tried it. It was totally worth it. And I hope you try it too, because I know you're going to love it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>